What's up YouTube? My name is Tarek. I'm a music photographer and videographer based out of Portland, Oregon. I'm 30 years old and I've worked with artists such as Rehab, Rez, and Seven Lions, just to name a couple. These are artists you might have seen at your hometown rave or festival, and I'm the guy following them around with a camera. I'm usually photographing and filming their entire set, amongst other one-off projects like photographing Seven Lions at a church in Seattle, for example. It's an incredible job slash side hustle to have, and because of that, people tend to ask me, how do you get into the music industry? How did you get hired to shoot XYZ artist? So I decided to dedicate a video to my personal experience on how I became a music photographer with an overarching lesson that will be revealed at the end of the video that I think you're gonna really like. We're starting from the very beginning. I'm talking 10 plus years ago, but I do wanna make it very clear that this isn't the only way to become a music photographer and there are probably an infinite amount of ways that you can get into the industry. But this is my story and my experience and I hope it will shed some light on the entire process so that you can become a music photographer too. First, we need to travel back 13 years into the past to March 2009, where I attended my first concert with my brother and two friends. It was a band named Escape the Fate, and they were playing at the Hawthorne Theater here in Portland. I actually had my first camera with me at the time, the one that's always on my desk behind me, and I remember always wanting to capture important life moments. Here's a photo I captured of their bassist at the time, Max Green. You can consider this my first official concert photo, taken right by the bathrooms, I'll never forget. After that concert, I became obsessed with going to rock and pop punk shows. I ended up going to the Vans Warped Tour the following five summers and between my two old cameras and my old iPhone I made sure to capture as many cool moments and videos as possible including this intro from a day to remember back in 2011 Fast forward to 2016, just like most people who started out listening to rock and pop punk music, I'm now well immersed in the EDM scene. But at that point in my life, I was also focusing on school and I had a day job at the Apple store. So I only really captured moments with my iPhone due to how busy I became. My Instagram was still filled with thousands of life moments though, even if I was just using my phone to capture them. Because of that, I started getting known as the photography guy in my social circles, which I guess is a result of consistently taking photos. I just didn't see the photography business opportunity that was developing right in front of me. Me, at least not until I attended this festival in Eugene, Oregon. It was called Mad Decent Block Party. And at this festival, I noticed a photographer on top of this rig behind the crowd capturing the show and was definitely getting paid for it. And I thought to myself, am I even good enough to do that? Do I even have the it factor to have a cool job like that? I probably spent way too much time looking back to watch the photographer work than enjoying the show itself. But it really captivated me that I could potentially combine my love for photography and capturing moments with my love for electronic music. Plus the concept of bringing my camera to a concert wasn't something that was new to me. The following day after some social media research, I reached out to the photographer on Twitter and asked him straight up, how do I get your job? Serious inquiry. Check the dates of the festival and the tweet. It was literally the next day. I quickly became obsessed with the idea of photographing shows on a professional level. And little did I know that tweet would be the catalyst for my photography business, my music photography career, and in time, this YouTube channel that you're watching this video on. He replied 15 minutes later and his advice was to start shooting, struggle for a few years, hopefully get better, expect nothing, work hard, and focus on the images you're creating. And that's what I did. In February 2017 was the first small show that I shot at the start of this new journey I was on. My friend and coworker James, aka Mutagen, invited me to photograph him after learning that I was interested in photographing live music. Now this show was as small and local as it gets, but at least I was able to bring my DSLR camera into the venue. I ended up shooting for James a couple more times that year, one of those events being his own. At the same time, I was working through a different angle. Through a close friend of mine, I discovered KPSU, which was my university's radio station. I reached out to KPSU's programming director who just so happened to be photographing concerts as well. And here's what I told him. I'm a photographer and student at PSU, and I show great interest in learning more about what you do for KPSU. I'm currently trying to build a portfolio in concert photography and was excited to see your Instagram. It looks like such an amazing opportunity and I would love to learn more and be a part of the team. I'm on campus Monday through Friday. Not the best looking cold email, but long story short, KPSU became my first publication that I joined as a photographer and a writer. And when you're first getting started, I've learned that joining a publication or a media outlet, like a magazine or a blog, basically a media 
media news source that has a platform is the best way to get your foot in the door and to start building that portfolio, which then leads to paid gigs. You can see all my work with KPSU in the description below. So with that said, through KPSU and other publications that I joined throughout 2017, I was able to shoot many Portland and Washington shows on their behalf. And in that, I learned not only the basics when shooting in low light, but I also was getting better and better with my cold emails and I was learning how to edit with Lightroom and eventually Photoshop as well. During that part of my journey, I photographed artists such as Two Chains, ASAP Ferg, One Republic, ASAP Rocky, the last warp tour that ever took place in Oregon, and I even was lucky enough to get on stage for a barely alive B2B virtual riot show, which was pretty cool. And that's just to name a very few of the artists I was able to get a photo pass for, all due to joining my university's radio station. With all of that said, 2017 was also the year I graduated from Portland State, and it was also the year I started my photography business, which means I was now able to focus more of my time and energy into music photography. Now in 2018, things started to pick up speed. I had the opportunity to shoot Summer Meltdown Festival and Base Canyon, both in Washington State. Paps Blue Ribbon's team had reached out to me to photograph their event with A Boogie. Liquid Stranger's team had reached out to me for Thunderdome in Tacoma. By 2019, the rest is history. I joined a production company called Rose Entertainment here in Portland and photographed almost every EDM event that they hosted. I worked directly with artists such as Tritonal, Madion, and Rez, and even joined Bonnie and Clyde at an after party in Vancouver, Canada. To add on to that, I worked worked media team gigs at Paradiso and Lucky Festival that year. 2019 was a year I started to feel my success in music photography start to rise exponentially. I honestly didn't think that anything could stop me at that point. Twenty twenty, a year that was supposed to be one of the greatest. We all had high expectations and entered the new year with excitement and colorful skies. Not a single one of us could have had even the slightest idea of what was about to happen. Even by February first, twenty twenty, exactly three years since starting my journey, I was working with Phase One at the second Thunderdome event in Tacoma. Two days together capturing photo and video. Honestly, I was having the time of my life. That was even when I upgraded my logo and my business name to what it is today. I was riding the wave of all the gigs I was getting hired for. I was even close to getting hired for two of my biggest festivals yet in March. But then, you know the rest. The pandemic, of course, was rough for the entire music industry and the world, and it's most definitely stopped the success I was gaining right in its tracks, which I realize in the grand scheme of things is trivial. Throughout all the downtime that was 2020, like most of the world, I started to think of other creative outlets to explore, either for personal fun or for financial gain. And the silver lining of the pandemic was that I became fascinated with everything about YouTube. Twenty twenty one was my first year publishing videos on YouTube, and in that year I published thirty seven videos. And as of right now, four of my top six most popular videos are music photography related, which is crazy and pretty validating. During my time as a music photographer, gatekeeping was a huge thing, and I didn't want to be a part of any of that, which is why I create videos like this one, so that the next generation of music photographers and videographers have every resource they need. Now, while 2021 was my first year on YouTube, it was also when I got hired for my first event since the pandemic started a road rage drive-in here in Portland. This was still peak pandemic, so masks were on the entire time, social distancing, you know how it was. After that initial re-entrance into the music industry, the rest of 2021 was actually pretty insane. By the end of the year, I had worked with 21 different artists directly at seven different festivals, including EDC Las Vegas, one of the, if not the, biggest EDM festivals in the world. I remember being in this really nice hotel in Vegas that was completely paid for, wondering how I even reached that point in my music photography career. By the end of 2021, I reached almost this point of fulfillment that I can't really describe, like I had proved to myself that I was able to do this job that I first discovered in 2016, even with any of the doubts I had felt about myself or my skills. Am I even good enough to do that? Do I even have the it factor to have a cool job like that? Weren't the questions I should have asked myself five years prior. I should have asked myself, how do I be consistent enough to do that? to be a successful music photographer. And in that journey and in that consistency, I learned so much, but most importantly, I found another creative calling. This year, 
2022 for those of you watching in the future, I stepped back a little from music photography to focus more heavily on YouTube. Don't get me wrong, I did photograph two artists at Beyond Wonderland at the Gorge in the summer, but that was mostly to take my girlfriend to her first EDM festival. That said, if I've learned anything throughout my music photography journey, it's that if you focus your energy on one thing consistently, before you know it, you'll be successful in that thing. And with that logic, I'm now putting most, if not all, of my focus and energy into my YouTube channel, with a lot of my videos being music photography related. And if the comments on my YouTube videos and the DMs on my Instagram have taught me anything, it's that I think I'm making the right move with teaching the next generation of music photographers the importance of building a portfolio, networking, hustling, how to get paid gigs, hybrid shooting, amongst many other lessons that I'll link in the description below. As far as my plan from this point on, I'm going to continue building out my YouTube channel for my community of creatives with more music photography related videos in the pipeline. Do I want this to be a music photography channel? Probably not. And eventually I will shift to different types of creative videos. Am I retiring from music photography? Again, probably not. But for now, my attention is on YouTube. That doesn't mean that you won't see me shooting at a festival from time to time. And I suppose the lesson of this long-winded story is that you can achieve anything that you want in your life. You can build a career that you want. You can become a successful music photographer. You can build a successful YouTube channel. Whatever it is, you can do them all in your lifetime. You just can't do them all at once. And more importantly, you won't excel in any of those fields, creative or otherwise, if you're not willing to invest consistent hours into mastering them. If you wanna become a successful music photographer, you have to choose it as your one primary focus that you're consistent with. And you focus on it every day for years. And that's the secret to mastery. Just like that tweet I sent back in 2016 being a catalyst in my career, I'm gonna ask those of you who made it this far to subscribe to my channel and help grow this community. I wanna build a community of creatives that will trust the creative process process no matter what the obstacle is. And with that said, I have a bunch of different videos that I could direct you to from here, but I think you should continue on to this video for 10 extremely important tips on how to get into concert photography. I'll see you there.